Let's be seated. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Ephesians 6 13. Wherefore take unto you the old armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. God bless you. Johnson Suleiman is my name. I like to give you an information. The Bible says in Jeremiah 3 verse 15, I will give you pastors after my heart that will feed you with knowledge. Feed you. So the assignment of a pastor is to feed God's people with knowledge. And how can you feed them to stand? You do everything it takes to stand. Stand. Amen. God wants us to stand. So many people who, how many of you know that your literal physical standing now demands effort? If you want to forge or release yourself. Alright? When you are waking up in the morning to rise up from the bed, demands what? Effort. To walk demands so to stand firm in Christ demands effort. Effort. A lot of people think that Jesus will help them stand. Jesus will only support you when you make a decision to stand. The finished work of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus does not alienate your own work. Alright? So, <laughs> it does not alienate your own work, your own decision to play your part. So, it's very important that we know our place as believers. That what God expects of us. So many people think that the righteousness of God. When Jesus died for you and resurrected, you have become the righteousness of God. That's what Jesus did for you. To make you acceptable to God. Every other thing you do for yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have become the righteousness of God by reason of the death of Christ. But do you know being the righteousness of God does not make you a graduate? You go to school. Being the righteousness of God does not give you a wife. It can only help you and assist you. Being the righteousness of God does not make you a millionaire. You, you must engage in a craft. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand that? By the righteousness of God. So, if you, if you understand what Christ has come to do, you also understand your own place in Christ. And that's what helps you to appropriate that which has been delivered unto you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So those people who do not understand their place in Christ, things that once you are born, and that's one of the deceptions that Christians of this end time have been deceived with. Amen. You know, there's a controversial statement and saying about what I said about Paul. I'll respond tomorrow. I will respond. You know I will respond. Because, yes, you don't pick a video and just pick what you heard. Pick what was being said. Because the biggest the problem we have today is those who are standing on the of Paul. They say there's no altar, there's no foundation, there's no baptism, there's no vigil. I will respond. And I will respond very badly. I will respond. They don't know Paul's teach more than I do. I know Paul's teaching more than they do. They read book. Me, I went there. <laughs> 
Now respond. They know I respond. They know you know I must respond. But they already kept quiet. So all of them would just embarrass themselves. Because I was just seeing different narrative. If they, ah, I, I will respond. Some are saying, uh, our father, our father in the Lord, great man. I love him. He even said all the teachings of Paul are correct, they are of God. But our father does not believe in teachings of Paul. Because in 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen, Paul says the woman's hair is the covering of her head, not scarf. So if our father believes teachings of Paul, let him tell his people to remove their scarf. Let him tell his people to remove their scarf. He does, he does not so leave that side. We are going to talk about it. You don't understand. Hold on, let me show you something. In Ephesians 1, 20 to 21, Ephesians 2, verse 6, Paul told us, he told us, he says, verse 20 to 21, he says, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, to set him to sit in heavenly places. 21, above principalities and powers, might and dominion. In Ephesians 2, 6, Paul now said, we have been raised with him together. Am I correct? To sit in heavenly places above all, all powers. Meaning we are more than them. But Paul said again in Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against principalities and powers. How? If you are seated with them, with Christ above them, why? Hold on. Does it mean Paul was wrong? No. Paul grew in revelation. We'll talk tomorrow. We'll talk. Everybody will keep quiet when I finish. I, I allowed of them to talk because they don't understand what I meant. Are you following me? Paul told us, he said, speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, First Corinthians 14, when you speak in tongues, before the unbeliever, it's embarrassing. He says, so be careful of speaking in tongues. Don't speak in tongues randomly. So that unbelievers do not mock you because they don't understand it. In that same chapter, Paul said, please make sure you don't stop anybody from speaking in tongues. I'm confused. You said we don't speak in tongues randomly. You now said, don't stop anybody from speaking in tongues. You now went further to say, me, I speak in tongues. So now, you are now confused between, should I speak in tongues? Should I not speak in tongues? You, what do you do? You fall back to what Jesus said. They shall speak with new tongues. That settles your fear. Are you following what I'm saying? Leave these people. You know, Christianity today, when, when a pastor does not have work on ground, he wants to trend online. <laughs> Those who have work on ground don't trend online. So we'll talk. We'll talk. I told them I said I'll respond. They say, please, please. I say, I, say, I will respond. They say, there's already confusion everywhere. I say, I want to settle the confusion. I will respond. People are dying because what killed their father, killed their mother, killed their brother. You are telling me it's not real. You are telling me it's not real. Confusing yourself with if any man being Christ is a new creature. Before you became born again, you were tall. You were tall. Now you are born again. Are you still tall? Yes. No, I thought you became short. Before you were born again, you were light-skinned. Now you are born again, you are dark. It is your spirit and your soul that salvation affects. If you don't stop, what stopped your father? What stopped your father will stop you. Amen. Standing firm in Christ. Now, do you know, when it comes to standing, there are people who are standing, but their standing is shaky. You cannot say you are standing when your standing is not firm. He said, having done all to stand. In other words, you need to do all it takes to stand. You need to do everything that is required of you to stand. Having done all to stand, Stand therefore, Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast in the liberty we are with Christ and made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast. 1 Corinthians 16 13. It's important when references are made, put them down. Become like the barrier Christian. The barrier Christians, when Paul finished teaching, the Bible said they were more noble than the Christians in Thessalonica. Acts 17 11, I believe. He said they received the word of God with all red. After Paul finished teaching, they went back to confirm if those things were so. That is why we take scriptures down. Acts 17, 11. They were more noble. The Christians in Thessalonica took everything hook, line, and sinker without research. But the better Christian went back and they began to search if those things that they were taught were so. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. God wants us to stand fast in the faith. Quit 
fight like men and be strong. Is the plan and intention of God for you to start? If you want to backslide, just stop praying, just stop studying. You're already sliding off the faith. But to maintain your work with God, you must be intentional. You wake up, you pray. You wake up, you study, you fast. That is a person who is intentional in his work with God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Second Thessalonians 2.15. 1 Thessalonians 3.8. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 15. He said, therefore brethren, stand. Stand fast. Hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistles. Stand fast. Hold the traditions which you have been taught. First Thessalonians 3 verse 8. Whether by word or by epistle. For, for now we live if we stand fast in Christ. It's not a wish to grow. Growth in God is not a wish, it's a work. Our growth in God is not a wish, it's a work. It's a deliberate. Miracles are not waited for. Nobody waits for miracles. Every miracle that happens is a deliberate intention to trigger something. That is why it's called the gift of working of miracles. Not waiting for miracles. Those that wait for miracles wait till they die. But those who work miracles enjoy miracles naturally. Miracles becomes a natural occurrence when you work it out. Tell somebody work it out. Even salvation is worked out. Work out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. 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 In standing firm in Christ, the first deliberate and intentional act in standing firm in Christ is guarding your mind. Guarding your mind. Guarding your mind. The things that you see the things that you hear. Your mind is the center of your spiritual gravity. Everyone who wants to grow in God must have a functional mind. What you permit in your mind is what forms the future that you enjoy. What you allow in your mind because information is formation. Anytime you are informed, something is formed. If you listen to tales and stories of accident and battles fear is formed if you listen to bad news and stop i mean all kinds of happenings around something is formed but when you listen to positivity confidence is brewed confidence is formed so information is what formation when you are informed something is formed so for you to grow in christ you must guard your mind guarding your mind is a deliberate effort in uh, Proverbs 4 23, he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So you must be deliberate in keeping your mind. A polluted mind is a polluted destiny. The devil can never manipulate a person until he has hold of the mind. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Mind renewer is what empowers transformation. Our transformation is a progress, is a process, and it's only stirred up by our mind. The more renewed your mind is, the effectiveness your transformation becomes. You move from one level to another level when your mind is renewed. You see yourself glowing, glowing in the realms of the spirit and in the things of God when your mind is renewed. Say, Lord, help my mind. I can't say, Lord, help my mind. One more time, say, Lord, help my mind. Why are people refusing to be saved? When you are preaching to somebody, he tries to argue with you. And somebody, when the generation, when people will argue, that's why I'm talking about these teachings that they are teaching. There's something called Calvinism. It's the teaching of a man called John Calvin. Many youths, some of you may not have heard of it. Many youths have slided into Calvinism. They don't believe in miracle. They don't believe in faith. They don't believe in... And all of them stand from the letters of Paul. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. The letters of Paul are powerful. Very powerful. I'll show you that. Very powerful. But the words of Christ. You know somebody said... All scriptures are 
inspired of God. Right? That's the defense. You, you see, when people quote scripture like traditional rulers, it becomes a problem. What is scripture? Jesus is scripture. Jesus is the scripture. Yeah. Luke 22, 27. John 5, 39. Search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life for they are they which testify of me. Fred Price said something and they almost killed him in his generation. There's a man called Fred Price. He said something and they almost killed him. He said, the word of God is the scripture. That's what he said. I'm quoting Fred Price. He said, the word of God is the scripture. He said, but not all scripture is the word of God. They almost killed him. They almost Because we have this sacredness. He said, he said, the word of God is the scripture, but not all scripture is the word of God. They almost killed him. Are you following what I'm saying? Judas hung himself. Where is it? In the scripture. Go and hang yourself now. Are you following is the mentality? There are things in the scripture that are not there for us to do, but for us to avoid. So you cannot say because it's in the book. You go and do everything. Ahithophel went to his house and hung himself. Oh yeah, go and obey. There are things in that book that God puts there for us. The Bible said they are written for our learning. That we through the comfort of the scripture may have hope. Are you following what I'm talking about? So this is what they, I'm, I'm not talking of this I'm talking of the generation coming. Their brain are, is so sharp that they will open I sat down with them four hours. University students, and they were engaging me. I noticed all their quotations were from the letters of Paul. I said, You have been talking Philippians and Ephesians. Why didn't you go to the Gospels? He says, I leave that side, leave that side, leave that side. Because the words of Christ settles the matter. Are you confused? Now, some of you are pastors, and I want you to be very honest. Some of you are members, you are some are pastors, and be very honest. Be very honest. Some of you are paying your tithe because you grew up loving the lord about it but the teachings you have heard on titan confuses you a bit if you're in that category raise your hand be honest now confuses you right and you are saying ah, ah. you just some of you are paying tight because it works for you but a part of you is like is this thing really right matthew 23 23 what did jesus say about titan Bring the New Living Translation. Okay, let's do the King James first. What are you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law? Judgment, mercy, faith, this ought ye to have done and not leave the other undone. Okay? I will explain to you. Bring the New Living Translation. But you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. God, Jesus was the one talking now. Should you tithe, yes. The last time I checked, yes is yes. So what Jesus says now settles your confusion on tithe. But what Jesus was saying is that don't tithe. Don't focus on tight when your heart is wicked. Don't think that tight is, is an escape route to perpetrate wickedness. That you Pharisees, you tight, but your heart is wicked. You, you, you victimize people. He says, I'm not saying don't tight, but as you tight, also have the consciousness of mercy, of justice, and law. So he said, I don't rule out tithing, but as you do tighten, add other elements of your faith in line with tithe. Should you tight? Should you tie from the lips of who? The final authority is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. So there's no confusion anywhere. Okay, let's, let's, if you are confused. And you think the letters and Paul holds the scripture. Right? You think Paul is the center of the scripture. My question is, 
what scriptures were the disciples studying before Paul got saved? What were they preaching? Because when the Holy Ghost came, Peter referenced Joel. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. So before Paul got saved in Acts chapter 9, what were they preaching? And they expounded their, their eyes and showed them the scripture. So what scripture were they preaching? It was Christ. It was what? He only came to lend his voice to the message of Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? I am standing on the message of Christ. Now, you know, do you know, they know where I'm going, no? They know where I'm going. Yes. People were fasting this January. Different churches. These guys came out and rubbished all the fasting. Uh, because they are standing up. They know where I'm going. I'm spoiling their market. They rubbish. There's a comedian that died. The comedian. They cut off his legs. You know the comedian. Before he died. His grandfather died of poison. His father died of poison. His uncle died of poison. He died of poison. You are telling me foundations are not real because if any man is in Christ, shut up! We are in this conference. We will tear the thing down. Since all of us want to be crazy on the internet, let's be crazy. So that people who have practical experiences will come out and speak and say, what he's saying is true. It happened in my family. We are talking about a, a man who owns a bank who died of an helicopter crash. His elder brother died by accident. His sister coming from Onimo died by accident. He died by accident in a crash. You tell me that these things are not real. There are pastors, some of you looking at me now. In your family, there's a pattern. The one person will tell me one thing you are talking about. Then I speak. You are telling me that um, as you, we are in Christ. It's not happening. We will both bring debate, theory, and we will bring people practical. We had to go and hide. Let us let us up. And I spoke. You know, they, 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 they just pick one part. When they teach rubbish, it doesn't trend. But when a person, a man talks, somebody can open his mouth and say, "There's no hell," and nobody's calling him out. Nobody's calling the person out. He can say, "There's no hell." Nobody say, "Hey," he said, "That God is too merciful not to not to to put a place where you'll be burnt with fire." God. Bible says in Revelation, it says they shall be cast into hell, a place of torment, where the worms died not. Are you going to rewrite scriptures? Because they are trying to maintain a narrative that God cannot kill. That God does not kill. God kills you. Luke chapter 12 from verse 4. Fear them not that which can kill your body. After that, have nothing they can do to you. But let me forewarn you who you shall fear. Fear him that after he has killed your body. We cast your soul into hell. And not five sparrows stole for two fattings. Yet not one of them is forgotten by your father. For the very hair of your head that's numbered. And you have more value than many sparrows. Luke chapter 12, 4 to 7. Let's enter scripture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can bamboozle children. That we don't talk is because we don't want to make the place rowdy. Yes, that's why we don't talk. We see some teachers, we just ignore it. We don't talk. We, say, we just smile. Because any debate that does not save souls, leave it. Leave is not necessary. The only time you debate is when you see that this teaching is taking people from the kingdom. But so long it's just doctrinal issues. Leave it. Doctrines, doctrinal matters don't take people to hell. Are you following me? Covering hell, not covering hell, doesn't take people to hell. Oh, I'm going to another teaching now. Because you will tell me that, oh, what about those who said they died and they went to hell and God now said they should go and Nobody has gone to hell. People have already seen revelations of hell. Nobody has gone to heaven. If you go to heaven, you are not permitted to come back. You will stay there. But God can show you. Uh, <laughs> you are confused. <laughs> no. Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his tongue and quench my test. He says, not so. For no one who comes here goes back. There's a gulf between me and you. Send him to tell, tell him to go and tell my brothers. I have five brothers to preach to them. He said, not so. For anyone who has gotten here, does not go back. 
let's follow the word of God now. So did, you, did the person see hell? Yes, but it was a revelation. And you come back. Why is it that everybody who claim to die and come back? When they come back, they say, don't wear your ring. It's only a dress code. Let me tell you what happens. Check them while they were alive. They were so tied to the God of fashion. So when they died, Jesus gave them a revelation concerning themselves. But they now brought it as a message for the church. Somebody asked me, so apostle, are you saying covering air or opening air? What is right? I said from Paul's teaching, he has said, a woman's hair. It's not a problem of hair. It's a problem of head. A woman's hair, hair, is the covering of her head. Okay? But, there are people who have a personal relationship with God when he tells them cover your hair obey the leading that you have of God and do not see another person like a sinner who is not following the leading that you have I walk with God somebody say my mind come under the influence of the Holy Ghost do you know why Jesus was a man of power he walked through the shores of time he was a man of power walked on water turned water to wine he moved in such supernatural dimensions it was not just because he was the son of God raised in power it was because of one element his mind that is why when Paul extracted Jesus he said let this mind Philippians 2 verse 5 let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So what made Jesus standing was his mind. Guard your mind. Guard your mind from wrong informations. It's not everything you see that you should watch. Check people today who are struggling with masturbation, sexual attack in their dream. Check the information they put into their spirit. Check the content. Satan works on something. If you give him nothing, he has nothing to work with. Satan works on materials. He's not that powerful. If you create an avenue, let Satan should take advantage. For we are not ignorant of his devices. If you don't give Satan materials, he can't build on anything. It's the materials you give him that he built on. You guide your mind. You protect your mind from the information. Jesus said, take it how you hear. You protect your mind from negative informations. Protect anything today. You see, when you watch something or you hear something, the devil might take. You see, we have different makeup. There are people, the processing um, capacity of their temptation can take one year. Some, if you stay around the music, a, a music with heavy sound, to get to, to get to. For like 10 hours, you, you, walk, you, you are just there battling the car because it's not your personal car. So, is, is an unbeliever who wants the car? The music's an unbelieving music. You say, put it down, they refuse. For 12 hours, when you come out of that place in your head, why are you laughing? But is it true? Is it true? And if you have a sharp mind, you will, you, you will be surprised you're talking to somebody. You see yourself. Oh, Jesus, I rebuke. <laughs> right? I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke, I rebuke. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke. Even when you are praying. <laughs> what is being worked on? So, he said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, sound mind. So, God, mind, God, the information. There are things people are talking about. You stand up, you walk away from there. Because if it does not enter your mind, the devil has nothing to process. Hallelujah. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So what are the things God expects you to think on? Things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praise. Anything that lacks this component, you are not permitted to allow it in your spirit. You are not permitted to allow it in your spirit. Guard your mind. Guard your mind. Hallelujah. Guard your mind. If your mind must be guarded, avoid worries. Avoid worries. The Lord Jesus said to us in John 14 verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. And the only way to escape a troubled heart is to believe in God. Believe he has a future for you. Believe he has prepared a future. There is something awaiting you. He has a better plan for your life. No matter what you are going through now, believe in God. And believe also in me. Who is he? The word. Believe in the existence and omnipotence of the sovereign God. When Jesus said believe in God and believe also in me, what it means, believe in the presence of the omnipotent God and also believe what I have said because I'm the word. Believe what is written in scripture. Let not your heart be troubled. There's a plan of God for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected than Psalm 139 and verse 17. How precious are thy thoughts towards me, O God. Great is the sum of them. So God has a better plan for you. He has a better plan. So don't be worried. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two. Don't be carnal. If your mind will be guarded, don't be carnal. To be carnally minded is death. Romans 8, 6 to 7. Romans 8, 6 to 7. You know, listen to this. Listen. The biggest enemy of God is not the devil. The devil is too small to be an enemy to God. An enemy is one that has the same capacity as you are to oppose you. Before you say an enemy of a nation or a personality, he has the same capacity. Satan is a creature of God who perverted his ways. Are you following what I'm talking about? Satan is a creature of God who perverted his ways. The biggest enemy of God is the carnal mind. For the carnal mind is an enmity with God. To be carnally minded is enmity with God. What does it mean to be carnal minded? To live a life with logic. Logic. To be carnal minded. There are many people who think that everything, you know, they, they, they are oblivious of spiritual actions. When you hear somebody, you see, people do not understand that there's a thin line. Thin line. Between carnality and spirituality. Thin line. When somebody says, it's not by going to church. That sounds a little bit right. But that's carnality. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people are going to church, but their heart is far. That's a right statement. But when the devil wants to extricate you from the church, he starts bringing thoughts like that. It's not, huh? it's not by fasting. It's not by praying. There's an element of truth, but it's not total. When the devil wants to make men withdraw from faith, he starts showing them certain, certain holes in their service to God. Certain holes. And when you start thinking like that, who, 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 who is clean? Who is righteous? Yes, who is righteous? 
Who is righteous? Even in my house, God is here. Even this, my it's not by going to church. This, my house is a church. Where two or three are gathered. My wife is here, my children are here. This place now is a church. <laughs> so, when the devil starts giving thoughts like that, that is why the Pharisees, if you watch some things the Pharisees were saying, and Jesus was countering them, countering them. Jesus came to empower spirituality. They came to empower legality. Moses said, it is written in the law. They didn't go outside the law. It's written in the law. When the devil came, it came with it's written. So you can be quoting scriptures and be kind of. Satan, Satan, Satan is the best theologian. The devil is the best theologian and he's still a devil. The devil is the best theologian. Theology, Satan knows it. Satan was quoting the word to the word. Satan saw the word of God, was quoting the word of God to the word of God. He wasn't quoting it to a believer in Christ. He was quoting the word to the word. It is written. He shall give his angels charge over you. That you will not dash your feet against the stone. Was that not the scriptures? But Satan took one part out of that scripture. Because the book of Psalm, it says, shall give his angels charge over thee, that they keep you in your way. Satan removed that one. In other words, when you go out of your way, you abuse angelic protection. So Satan removed that part. Yeah. The, you, what that means is that you cannot open a zoo with lion and enter and say, angels are you. But, but if peradventure that happens on its own, angels will keep you. They will protect you. That is why he says, I'll give his angels charge over you, that they keep you in all thy ways. The first thing they will do is to direct you from error. To make sure you don't violate the covenant of protection. So that their watching over you can be effective. But Satan removed, keep you in thy ways. Because he wanted Jesus to jump. And angelic protection does not empower stupidity. So Satan removed that because if Jesus had jumped, he would have been dead. But if, if Jesus was not away and he's pushed from the cliff, angels will take over him. So Satan says, I'll give it angels charge over thee. You will not dash your feet against a stone. Jesus said, no. No. That's not what scripture says. Get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't complete it. So the devil will never bring that up. On the, you, you brought that on the screen just now. The devil will never Amen. He shall give his angels charge over thee in their hands. They shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the soul. But Psalm, this is the temptation of Christ. Psalm 91 verse 11. Look at where Satan was quoting from. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all. But in Matthew 4, Satan took that out. He shall give his angels charge over thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Yeah. So you, what Satan is saying that you have angelic protection, angelic preservation. When you see a dangote trailer, just walk there. <laughs> just walk to a dangote trailer because angel. No. The angels will first keep you in your way. So when you are not aware and a truck is coming, the angels will wedge it because you are not aware. But when you are aware, You will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. Amen. Amen. Number two, and I'll pray. To stand firm in Christ, you must be careful of the company you keep. The company you keep. Your company determines what accompanies you. Second Corinthians six fourteen. <laughs> be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with righteousness what communion has light with darkness mind the company that you keep you must be intentional in keeping the right company when they saw the boldness of Peter and John 
they took knowledge of them. Acts chapter 4 verse 30. And they could see that they had been with Jesus. Acts 4, 28 and 29 and 30. Lift your right hand. Say every wrong company in my life in the name of Jesus Lord severe me from them. Every wrong company every wrong company Acts 4, 13. Acts 4, 13. Write that down. Proverbs 30 verse 20. Proverbs 13 verse 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But the company of fools shall be destroyed. There are people that God sees in your life and their entrance into your life opens up certain dimensions of favor. There are people God sees in your life and their entering your life is an answer to certain prayers. In Genesis 26, 24, God said to Abraham, I will bless, said to Isaac rather, I will bless you because of Abraham, your father's sake. Genesis 35, verse 9, you see, and God blessed the Egyptian for Jacob, for Joseph's sake. So there are people that enter your life. One time they needed the prophetic word. And all of them here wondering. Other prophets had prophesied, the king was not satisfied. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet in Israel? For whom we may inquire the words of the Lord. And the king said, eh, There is one man called Elisha. He poured water on the hand of Elijah. Second Kings 3 11. He said, But I don't like him. He said, Bring him. When Elisha came out, he said, We are it not for Jehoshaphat. You would not have seen my face. There are poor God sees in a place and God speaks and puts a word. Now, if that happens, it also means there are people God see in your life. Do you understand that? There are people that are in your life and they are entrant into your life. You attract negativity. There are people that have married into families. They, they start selling their properties. They sell their car. They sell their land. They sell their house. They, because there's an evil presence. And that is why in Jeremiah 16, it was very specific. I, I, I'm about to shake some table now. It was very specific. It says, don't marry from this family. The marriages of our fathers, 50 years, 60 years still married, was because then, when you bring a wife, or you tell them, before you even come for introduction, you say you want to marry, they'll say, who's the person? They say, they'll say, go. They will investigate. Nothing like love. Leave love. When they come back, they say, sorry, you cannot marry from that family. You say, what happened? You say, nothing, but you cannot marry from that family. That family is not a good family. It's because of a conclusion of their study. Are you following me? Yes. You cannot. And it lasted longer than what we see today. Amen. Amen. Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to hold back some things. Mm -mm. In the name of Jesus. Anyone here who's been manipulated into wrong associations, wrong relationships, wrong friendships, by the force of grace, I ask for a disconnection. I ask for a disconnection. I ask for a disconnection. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Why must you be in the right company? Number one, being in the right company is walking in obedience to God's word because God has instructed it being in the right company is walking in obedience to God's word number two being in the right company is avoiding being corrupted first Corinthians 15 33 evil communication corrupts good manners being corrupted there was a son that David had you remember him he desired his sister what was his name talk now Second Samuel 13. What is his name? Amnon. Amnon desired his sister. He liked his sister. Tamar. Loved her. Can I love? The love of lust. And he desired her. But he could do nothing. But if you read verse 3, 
He said, but Amnon had a friend. But Amnon had a friend. His name was Jonadab. In fact, not just a friend, he was a cousin to Amnon. The Bible calls him Jonadab, the son of Shemnia, David's brother. He said, Jonadab was a subtle man. He told Amnon. He said, this is your sister. He said, yes. He said, I like her. He said, then it's easy. Pretend and tell the king that you are sick. That is only Tama that can take care of you. When she comes, do whatever you want to do. And in those days, it was possible for a brother to marry a sister. Yes. Yes. That is why Tama said, if you like me, tell the king. It will not be withheld from you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The way you are looking at me now. No, in those days, it was possible. You could pick a wife among your kindred. That is why when Abraham said Sarah was his sister, it, it wasn't a lie to Abraham. It's a lie to us because we know them as husband and wife. But to him, it wasn't a lie. Because so long they have con there was a conjugal connection, he can't maintain sisterhood. Are you following me? Because there was a connection. A family connection. The earth was minimal. Numbers were few. So everybody is traced to somebody. So I'm not that a friend. That was what corrupted him. There are negative counsels that are taken because wrong people are in your life. But there are people that you are taking some. They say, why are you doing that? No, a Christian should not do this. Surround yourself with people whose strength is your weakness. Don't surround yourself with people who your strength is their weakness. Because when you surround yourself with people who are weaker than you. And there are some of us who we celebrate such things. Everybody around you, you pray more than them. Everybody around you, you study more than them. Everybody around you, you give more than them. You live only more than them. And that makes you feel like you're a counselor. You start decimating. But surround yourself with people that when you see their work with God, you feel challenged. You see their, their passion for scripture. You feel like you are doing nothing. Surround yourself with people who, you are, be who are better than you rather. Not people you are better than. Surround yourself. So you're, God wants you to keep the right company so that you will not be corrupted. Amnon was corrupted. That's what brought, does Amnon that brought the crisis between Absalom and David. Yes. The rebellion between Absalom because when <laughs> Amen when Amnon did what he did with Tamar, David kept quiet. So Absalom was angry because Tamar and Absalom were the same mother. So Absalom kept quiet. The same deception Amnon deceived the father. Absalom deceived his own too. He told the father, I said, I'm doing a celebration. Let all the king's sons come and celebrate with me. While they were coming, he gave an instruction. He said, when Amnon is drunk, kill him. So Amnon was drunk. They took him aside and they wasted him. Ah, David cried again. David wept and wept. But the son was gone. Absalom did not stop there. Because that's one thing about rebellion. When it starts, it doesn't stop. He continued. Went for the father's throne. And he knew he could not do that alone. So he had to conscript Ahitophel. Ahitophel too was already angry at what David did. Of course. Because Uriah and Bathsheba, your husband and wife. And David messed up with Bathsheba. And Bathsheba was the daughter of Ulam. Ulam was the son of Ahitophel. So Bathsheba was Ahitophel's granddaughter. So when David did what he did, I hate to be kept quiet. Because they were friends. We are friends. You did this to my granddaughter. He kept quiet. Waiting for an opportunity to strike. So when some people are silent, it's not because they are forgotten. They are looking for an opportunity to respond. I hate to fear was on the altar. Altar. Sacrificing. Eh? First, uh, second Samuel 15, 12. Sacrificing. It was from altar they recruited him to join wickedness. <laughs> I 
Absalom sent for Ahitophel the Gilead, a Davis counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices to God. And the conspiracy was strong. Ahitophel was offering sacrifices to the Lord. When they came and said, let's conspire to kill David, just from sacrifice to God. You know, you know why? His heart was already bitter. That's why you'd be shocked that somebody can leave a church. Prayer band leader. Prayer band leader. Choir master. And when they go out against the ministry, say, hey, why was Lindy those song or the solo or the bars or the tenor? His heart was boiling. He had so much there. But rebels don't last long. Ahitophel hung himself and died. They don't last long. People don't learn. Check every rebel in politics, in business, in ministry, in entrepreneurship. They never end up well. You left your boss, you took his customers, you start. They don't end well. You know why? God never supports a rebel. Do you know why God doesn't? Because rebel is in God of Satan. It reminds God what Satan did to him. So God will never back up a rebel. God will never. You can grow for five years, ten years. But your downfall will be something terrible. Never. Never rebel. Never rebel. You have a boss in the office and he hurts you. Walk away. You have people who have, give, who have fed you. Walk away. They now hurt you. Well, never rise up against them to fight them. You will not last. You will never last. You will never last. One of the first thing ministers must check is how did I live? If you like go and do 40 days fasting on the platform of rebel, you will suffer. Fast, fast, fast. What? Can I ask a question? What is the good of evil? No, 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 no. I'm not, you are not right. You, you, have, you have not studied evil. <laughs> what is the good? <laughs> eh? Is there a good part of evil? Looking for the good part of evil is when a rebel goes to a mountain. <laughs> somebody broke a man's church, carried members. Or somebody left a man's ministry, changed the sandboard, carried the instrument, everything. There is now having crisis in the ministry. He now goes to a mountain. He's looking for the good part of evil. So he's now praying, Father! This is your work. You see, eh? when you break a man's church and carry his members, God does not see it as your work. He sees it as his work. You are an extension of his work. The day all of them leave and you start from the scratch, that is your work. When I left the church in Lagos, the Lord says, Time to leave. Somebody said, go to Ibadan. I said, no, it's close to Lagos. People will come. If some of the members told me they will come. Someone said, go to Ogo. I said, no, go to Ondo. I said, no. The first thing I did was to change my number so nobody could reach me. I changed my number. And I left that location, came to Benin. When I got to Benin, I grew up in Benin. I preached in Benin. I knew if I started in Benin, people in the churches we have ministered will follow me. I left Benin. Because I didn't want to build my work with another man's block when the man has labored on a member prayed on that person fathered that person mentored that person the person gave birth he, he dedicated the baby he went for the naming he did all that and now come because of the anointing and move everybody even if you have spirituality have humanity have humanity amen so refuse to be corrupted. Nobody sins alone. There must be a partner. For sin to flourish, there must be a partner. Satan was roaming as a serpent in the game, looking for a sin partner. Adam and Eve were not the first sinners. Satan was the first. He rebelled. So God cast him down. And the Bible tells us that he was looking. He came to Eve and made Eve to doubt the word of God. Satan has no revelation. Satan follows letter. That's why he was asking Eve, did God say when he knew that Eve did not understand the revelation, he built on that. Because revelation is only by the spirit. 
Satan can quote scriptures, but Satan doesn't have revelation. Revelation is by the Spirit. That's how you know a prophet and a man of God. You can fake everything, but you can't fake revelations. Because it comes from the Spirit. Am I communicating right now? So the devil will plant people in a man's life to enhance and empower a life of sin. Number three, why you must be careful. Some good people in your life will attract the speed of God. Genesis 30 verse 27. Some good people in your life will attract the speed of God. I have learned by experience. This was Laban talking to David. That the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Another translation saying I've learned by divination. I've learned by divining the oracles. I've learned through divine inquiry that God has blessed me because of you. The next reason why you need the right people is the right people will strengthen your faith. Acts 18.23 They will strengthen your faith. Strengthen your faith. Strengthen your faith. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went all over the country of Galatia and Figria in order strengthening all the disciples. Number three, and then we'll pray. The third reason or key to standing firm in Christ is the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Psalm 51 verse 12, restore to me the joy of salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, many people today who are going through pain because there's no money in their account, they can't feed themselves and they are worried. If only they allow the joy of salvation, it will make you free from every form of competitive kind of life. You don't have a car, you are trekking. You can't feed your family, but there is joy of salvation. That is why your joy is determined by materialism. That's happiness. Happiness is a function of happenings. But the joy of salvation is a function of your relationship with God. Sir, you may not have food on your table, but you have a relationship with the creator. You may not be able to pay your children's fees, but you have a relationship with God. When the enemy wants to mess you up, it, it starts making you think of the things you are going through physically in your life. You are going through pains. You are going through rejection. The landlord is after you. The people you are trying to help, they are not standing firm. And God tells you, you are saved. He says, the joy of my salvation. And that Psalm 51 was after David messed up with Bathsheba. David felt empty. David felt guilty. David said, restore to me. There's something I remember that makes me happy. There's something I remember that makes me joyful. I remember I'm in connectivity with God. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Anytime you sit down and you are discouraged, you are feeling bad. You look around you. You look around you. Marriage crisis. Finance crisis. And you are depressed. It's because the devil is fighting with the joy of of your salvation. The joy of your salvation is what makes you smile and happy. And people are wondering you are going through this thing and you are smiling is the joy of salvation. They are wondering you are going through Christ. You? So you are smiling is the joy of salvation. Sometimes you are worried why you are not worried. Because there is joy. With joy shall we draw waters out of the well of salvation. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3 the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. You are going through crisis. It doesn't matter. James 1 verse 2. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation. For the trying of your faith work at patience. Let patience have a perfect work in you. That you be entire wanting nothing. The joy of salvation. There's no money. You don't feel it. You have no food. You don't know where the next meal will come from. But you are excited. You are dancing. You are praising God. And people are trying to remind you. After this, the landlord is coming. You say, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm, I'm excited. I have joy. 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 Be upstanding. Be upstanding. I have joy. I have joy. I have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy After all I've been through I still have joy 
I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, after all I've been through, I still sing it two more times to the Lord. I've joy. I still adore After all I've been through I still have to Restore to me The joy of my salvation Jesus Lord God Oh Restore to me, restore to me the joy of my Oh Lord, oh, you are my God. Restore to me, restore to me the joy of my Oh, 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 restore to me the joy of my salvation. Oh, 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 one more time. Restore to me. My salvation. Oh, 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 there is any trace of worry it's because there is an attack on the joy of your salvation if you are worried any form of worry it doesn't matter if the reasons for that worry are obvious when the joy of salvation overwhelms you there is nothing to worry you cry to the Lord today restore to me the joy of my salvation 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 Restore to me the job, my salvation. Open your mouth and cry to the Lord. Restore to me. Restore to me. Restore to me. Akona asete la rusaka, ragada ragada yata, rata tata tata tata, losi kola tata, likwa katele leta, roso katata, rakatele luta, holo lo na nata, holo lo na nata, holo lo na nata, ratu ya nata, ragada ragada, losa kwa kwa tata, lika tata. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
In Jesus name Help Receive help The Lord says help is yours In any department of life where you need help, receive help. In any phase of life you need help, receive help. Receive help in the name of Jesus. May the Lord severe you from wrong association. Every wandering mind, every polluted mind, come under the influence of God's word. By the truth of God's word, we ask for illumination on your mind. The Lord will clear every impurity, every debris in your mind. That your mind would only ponder on spiritual matters. And I am asking today, in your work with God, every area you need help, let help come every area you need divine assistance receive it now may the grace of God shine upon your life in Jesus mighty name amen give the Lord a clap offering we take our offerings now praise the Lord our conference begins in the morning ministers conference tomorrow morning praise God I said praise the Lord amen OFM, OFM pastors those outside and inside seven above your heads let's pray your offerings are blessed in Jesus name I'm told that this is some members Thank you for these offerings. Receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. Marvelous God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. Marvelous God, you're the miracle. So marvelous God, you are worthy, Lord. Sing marvelous God. You're a miracle. So marvelous God. You alone are worthy to be. You're the miracle. 
Reason for my testimony. I'll shout. You're the song that I sing today. You are the reason for my testimony. You're the song that I sing to my fellow God. Yeah. To be praised, you're the miracle in my life. To marvelous God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. You are the reason for my testimony. You're the song that I need today. You are the reason for my testimony. You're the song that I sing today. Marvelous God, oh. You alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. Marvelous God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. Marvelous God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life. So marvelous God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You're the miracle in my life today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord give you peace. In Jesus name. My head is a good head. My life is a good one. Angels shall fight for me. Greatness is on my side. Goodness shall follow me. No matter what the matter is. Somebody say my time has come. How are you? See you tomorrow morning.